All right, I'm getting ready to start scuffing the concrete for paint. Um, this is said to be the thing to use for when you have a really smooth, uh, when you have a really smooth surface. Um, they, whoever did it did a nice polish on it. So I got to rough it up so the paint will stick. I've got most of the stuff cleaned out. Um, I've got to do basically from that wall to there, which is which is 60 feet or 40 feet, and then all the way over to this blue line, which is 50 feet. This other section is going to be enclosed, and so I'm not going to and I'm be tiling that. So there's no reason to do that, and then all the way back over here. So this basically 40 by 50 area, uh, I had picked up a lift off of an out of an auction, and. Uh, I, uh, it ain't assembled. I just got it sitting there so it don't leak. I've got a little bit of an oil leak here, which I'm gonna have to sand and then maybe see, figure, figure out a way to get some stuff there. And that's water, that was from a water cooler I had. So all this is, is clean other than some rubber marks from, from the uh, scissor jack and some of these ladders and some of the other things that have rubber feet that are making marks. So, I'm gonna start sand. I'm gonna test a spot over here. Um, that way, I can. You know, it's not gonna be seen if a, something happens. And this is what I'm using. I'm using this. Is that uh, I rented this from a uh, local rental place, and it's a 17-inch um, sander or buffer floor cleaner, and it has a, a different type of a head that snaps on, or and I'm not cer certain how this is gonna work. Once you get it started, it goes like that, and that's the um, direction that it rotates. So as it's running, it'll never come off. But I don't, I don't know how that's going to work. And then the 40 grit sandpaper, um, they said I, they said it was peel and stick, but that ain't that ain't a sticky thing. And then they said this. Um, I, mean, I guess technically there's enough of a drop there that it ain't hitting. But we're going to see how it works. So we're going to try couple spots here uh, beyond this blue section and see what it looks like and I'll take a video of that and then I'll take some more videos as I'm done or as I'm going. Alright, see you in a few. I rented this machine and apparently it hadn't been rented uh, in a while because it had a, quite a bit of rust on this uh, on the handle and normally it wouldn't matter but on this particular one um, the it wouldn't I couldn't unrelease it and get it to where I wanted adjusted it and the way these things pretty much work is you you or the sandpaper is sitting there so it's sitting flat and it's kind of it's got the gyro uh, effect where if in, if it's off at any little bit it's shooting off in one of the two you know different directions so you have to have the handle for your height so that you you can kind of keep it at that flat spot and then tip it down and it'll go one direction tip it forward it'll go one direction tip it left and right it'll go back and forth so you can kind of control it without actually physically just it wearing you out and um, the arm is crucial and it got to the point where once I got it close, I just the, it kept loosening up, so I just tightened the nut down so that the arm won't move now. I've got those two squares, these two squares, and these two squares done. So at six of the 20 that I've got to do, um, basically it's that square, that square, this square, this square, this square. So it's five by four. So I'm not even halfway done, and I bet I have two hours 
and trying to get the machine to work and trying to get the um, stuff where it's you know not killing me and then you got when you're after I do a couple squares I uh, was blowing it out but it was making such a, a, a mess um, this stuff is like baby powder or top powder I mean it's super fine concrete dust um, and so what I'm doing is I'm vacuuming uh, getting them sweeping up what I can nice and slow and then I'm vacuuming the majority of it All right, so After fighting that machine, I've got everything sanded once uh, Using the 40 grit paper It's quite exhausting uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a breakdown here in a minute on what that is But as far as the floor, there's spots where I had oil You can still see the oil there was some spots that I had um, uh, pencil marks. Uh, those particular ones are new, but that little soft one there and a few other spots, or well, even like that, I don't even know what the hell that is, rust or something um, and stains like mud or clay. It's not taking that much of the concrete that it is just making that stuff disappear. So. What I did was uh, from this line over is 10 feet. Each of these squares are 10 by 10. Um, I'm building a room from about here all the way down to there and from about here all the way down just past the, uh, just past the buffer and back. So this section, um, this section is getting tiled and this section is going to have paint because it's going to be a room I'm going to have oil and stuff in. But I, uh, you know, you, when you start doing this, when you do this, you're getting concrete dust and it gives you a good idea of where you've been and uh, what the pattern and, and so you can kind of see it. I don't blow it uh, out of a shop vac or, or uh, the blower or anything. I've been sweeping it up and using the vacuum to get most of it up. Uh, I've, I've, like I said, I've already done all this once and now I've come back since I had a um, two pieces of sandpaper left. I started with a second time and I found this was kind of interesting. This section I did, you know, going like this and then I figured well I'll go the other way to make sure I didn't miss anything and you can see that uh, there's very little dust. There's a little spot right there. There's some over here in the corner. You can see the swirl marks. So to me, once it's already at whatever the texture that it's going to do it ain't going to make it ain't going to cut anymore uh, this one though it looks like i missed or this might have been extra dirty i did not wash this at all um, all i did was just start sanding uh, and same over here this isn't that much uh, you can kind of see a little bit of a lines here and there but most of it's okay but these this section right through here um, it was was pretty heavy and uh, you can see a few swirls there uh, over here and, and then up against the you know and, it, and the reason I think it's the fact that it just didn't get, get didn't get it the first time was because it's heavier on the edges where I missed because it was choo jumping into the damn machine or the wall and chewing up the, the pads and whatnot so I stayed away from it and I went back this time you can see just how heavy it is but you can still see um, this here shows you a little bit better with the lighting um, the you know just how much um, with the second pass and the second pass is a lot faster. Um, I also have the machine dialed in and uh, or at least as good as it's going to get. All right this is the final video. Um, it worked. I mean it got what uh, you can see. Uh, you can see the swirl marks even so you can kind of let me get over here where you might be able to see the, the lighting. Um, it was definitely worth doing a second time. There were some spots that, you know, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a whole area. It would just be a few little spots here or there. So I'm confident that from this point all the way over, it's sanded, it's clean. I will, um, I will be taking and washing the pressure washer the rest of the floor. Uh, I have to still get the caulk, but I have this stuff to poke down in there and fill the um, 
majority of the crack up so that I don't have to use so much caulk because a whole bunch of that was like 30 bucks and the caulk is like seven bucks a tube. So big difference there. Um, now on this, this is basically what happened to me was, as you can see the twisting aspect on them until I got to about here, um, which was after I basically fixed the machine. So you can kind of see just the twisting aspect of that and um, and I also believe that it has a lot to do with this pad as you can see it was I did you know some of this but it was I think out of whack out of balance from the get-go and that created a lot of my original issue but in short when it comes to these machines you want to have get as good of a, an adapter plate as you can possibly get and Put the paper on centering it left and right on that pad tighten it down good and snug and when you put it on here and you release the handle you want to be out in the middle of the room where there's nothing you can bump into and be ready um, and when you pull the trigger and you get going you want it where you will never be able to hold it out out front at least with this machine you always got to kind of hold it close to the hip and and you're basically in, when it comes to the handle you're lifting and pushing down back and forth, but you're also twisting this way and twisting this way. And that's how you're kind of steering it by like handlebar kind of a thing. And if you can't get to that point, you have to raise this up and down uh, to get to that, you know, your height determines this. So if you're short, you might have this lower down, or if you're really tall, you might have it up a little bit more. Um, but overall, uh, I'm happy with the, uh, with this uh, the next step um, is to wash and fill up the cracks with the with the rope and caulk and then I'm going to be able to let it dry and paint and uh, I ordered my doors and um, they're 12 by 12 Janssen 3100 or non insulated wind, wind rated and on the website they said it'd take two to four weeks and I called and put more or put, put more order in and I'm this, like I can pick them up locally. And they called me the next day and said they're ready. So I wasn't really ready for them to do that. So, but, but now that I'm in this process, as you can see, we get a lot of bugs flying in. I mean, it's Florida, so I'm still sweating. But if it rains, you know, it's gonna, that whole area gets wet and then it's two or three days for it to dry out. So I will be putting up my doors probably before I paint just so that I can get the area uh, fairly, fairly dried in and, and not have any more issues. Uh, on to the next step. Thank you for joining.